Hey everybody, in today's video I wanted to go ahead and share some easy steps to get your kindergarten, first, and second grade students writing their own poetry. Now in the last video I went ahead and shared, I shared some reasons why you should expose your young students to poetry and why it's so important for them. And actually tip number four in there, reason number four, was that it makes your students want to write their own poetry. It actually inspires them to do so. But writing poetry can be a little tricky when students are used to that very structured writing we've been doing all year long. So in this video today I have five easy steps to get your students writing their own poetry. I'm going to gather my notes and get things ready and let's get started with the video. Okay, step number one for getting students to start writing their own poetry is pretty obvious, but first they need to be able to explore lots of poetry on their own. Now all year long your students have been working on very structured writing. They've been learning how to write personal narratives, write their opinions and provide reasons. They've been learning about sentence and paragraph structure. And when they have to go from all these rules that they've learned into poetry and they start to like look at these poems they might say wait a second where's the punctuation where is this story you know with a beginning a middle and an end it's not as easy for them to see so naturally before our students would be able to actually write any poems themselves they need to explore all different types of poems i want them to see them i want them to listen to them and i want to talk about them together so i actually gathered a few of my favorite poetry poetry books that are specifically meant for kids that I absolutely love. Two of them I actually got from the Scholastic Book Clubs a few years ago. I'm sure they are still there. They're on Amazon as well, so I'll link those down below. This first one is called Shout, A Little Poems That Roar, and I'll go ahead and insert some pictures of what this actually looks like. But you can see here that the poems are colorful. They are in all different types of formats. Some are long, some are short. All of them are very, you know, kid oriented, which I love. This one here is one of my favorites. It's called Kids Rule. Write your letters, so much fun. Off to gym class, run, run, run. Time for numbers, one and two. Now it's lunchtime, chew, chew, chew. This one I feel like is a really fun one to imitate with the three words at the end that students can actually take and apply in their own writing. Another one I love that I also got from Scholastic Book Clubs a while ago is called Noisy Poems for a Busy Day. Now I really love these poems because as you can see, they are very short. So students don't have to feel overwhelmed by the thought of writing this big long poem. And as I'm actually going to talk about in the next step, this poem is full of sensory poems. It talks about what students can hear, what they see, what they feel, and that is an easy place to start when getting students to write their own poems. All right, another one I love is called Firefly July, and this is a year of very short poems. So again, nice and short for your students to read, and this one is separated by season. So they have spring, summer, winter, and fall. And I really love this one because the poems don't rhyme. As your students will begin to see, not all poems have to rhyme, which allows them to feel a lot more freedom when they actually write their own poem, because it can be pretty difficult for your students to produce these rhymes as they're writing. So this kind of lets students read more freeform poetry. And the last book I want to share that I absolutely love is New Kid on the Block, Poems by Jack Perlutsky. And actually, Jack Perlutsky in general, I love his poems for kids. Now, this is a big, long book. I actually have three poems marked off, so if you're in my writing club, my story-based writing unit this month that I've added to the club is um, based on three different poems. So students can actually read and then write their own poems based on these ones. But these are usually pretty funny. Um, there's one here, let me see if I can find it. It is called, Be Glad Your Nose Is On Your Face. And this is a rhyming poem and it basically talks about how you should be glad your nose is on your face and not sandwiched in between your toes or on top of your head or within your ear. Just these goofy little poems that get students laughing. Now in order for your students to really dive in and explore all these poems, you'll definitely want to highlight some of these, either rewrite them on chart paper or go ahead and put them under a doc cam so you can talk about the poems together and read them together. 
Also, feel free, if these are for your own classroom, make copies at the copier and pass them out to your kids so they can read it with you, they can mark up the rhyming words or different things they notice, and they can practice really enjoying these poems. I always had my students put them into their reading folders or their reading bins so they could read them all month long. And actually, when I was doing my student teaching like 11, 12 years ago or something, I actually made a little poetry pocket thing. Let me see if I I can find a picture it's gajillions of years old but it looks like this and with this what I had done is I made photocopies and I made them really small of tons of different poems that students like to read and what they would do is they would recommend poems to their friends so after they would go ahead and read a poem if they thought another classmate might really like it they would fold up the poem and they would go ahead and drop it in somebody else's poetry pocket so then once or twice a day they could go check their pocket and of course I would add my own little poems in there as well for students to check out if I thought they would enjoy them all right step number two in getting students to start writing their own poems is to focus on their senses. Now I like to have my students use sensory details a lot in their regular writing for writing workshop units. So my students were already somewhat familiar with this, but even if you don't use sensory details often in writing workshop, your students likely know what their five senses are and they can begin to write their own sensory poem. Now just like with any writing unit, I go ahead and model how to do this first and kind of do it with the class before they they go ahead and write their own. My process kind of looks like this. I would go ahead and let the class know that we are going to start writing our own sensory poems and I would give them a little planning sheet like this one right here. Now I have a bunch of different types of these sheets. Here is one for popcorn just as an example and together we would walk through doing this. So I would do it up at the front of the class and I would do it under a doc cam and they would each have their own sheet. We would just walk through what can I hear when I'm making popcorn? What can you see? What can you smell? What can you feel? We would walk through each of the senses and just brainstorm a few different words and ideas about things that our senses are gathering during that moment. Then on the next day, I would simply have them take that planning sheet and move it over to a blank piece of paper where they would write their own sensory poem. Now here's an example of one of my previous first grade students a long time ago who wrote this poem called Burning Popcorn. In it, the student writes, I hear the kernels popping in the microwave. I see yellow light in the microwave. I smell the butter on the popcorn. I feel spit falling down my chin. I taste burning popcorn. Ow! And then you can see that they drew a little picture of the burning popcorn from the microwave. There are a ton of different scenarios you could think of for students to write their own sensory poems. They could do a classroom poem. What do they hear, smell, see, touch, taste? What do they do right now in the classroom? What about at the zoo or in the garden? What about the senses of winter? It could be a winter themed poem. You could do it with virtually anything and students can just think about those five senses and start writing their own sensory poems. All right, step number three is to get students in touch with their emotions. So first we had students just explore a ton of different types of poems. Then we had students really think about the five senses and have them write some sensory poems. Now I like to really tell students that poetry, just like any form of writing, can be a great way to think about and express your feelings. Now you can do this so many different ways, but what I do is I like to have these little planning sheets right here and students will go Go ahead and pick an emotion that maybe they're feeling that day or that they just want to go ahead and express. So here's an example for feeling happy and first students will just go ahead and brainstorm four different things that make them feel happy. Being home with my family always cheers me up. I'm happy when I get to hang out with my friends, laughing at jokes, or swimming in the pool on a hot day. Those are some examples I might give the class for things that make me happy. Now students can go ahead and take that brainstorming sheet and really make a poem in many different ways. They could simply title it happiness and then go ahead and list, you know, one or two words in each line stating different things that would make them feel happy. They could also go ahead and try out a rhyme poem like this example I might share with them. Swimming in the pool on a hot summer day, hanging out with friends I love to play. My family always puts a smile on my face, sleeping in my bed is my own happy place. At the park with my sister, lemonade in my cup, these are just some ways to cheer me up. 
Now at this point I do like to show students a few different ways they could go ahead and make those poems by again just making a simple list, writing out a few sentences, or trying to rhyme like in that last one I shared. I like to emphasize to students that what is so great about writing poetry is that for the most part there aren't that many rules when you're writing freeform poetry, so they can write it in any way they want. After students go ahead and write their own feelings poems, I definitely like to have them share them with the class so we can see the different types of poems students wrote and the different types of emotions students wrote about as well. It's only after we go ahead and write some sensory poems, some emotion poems, and basically just kind of like list and sentence type poems where we're just kind of writing, we're just kind of getting out our feelings, emotions, our thoughts and ideas only after that is when I go into different types of form poetry that have specific rules. So that's actually going to be step four. Okay, so like, okay, so like it, blah. Okay, so like I just mentioned, step four is to introduce your students to different types of form poetry. Now, these can be a whole lot of fun, and these, like I explained to my students, are much different from those kind of free form sensory and feeling poems. Now, the sensory and feeling poems have some rules in the fact that, you know, a sensory poem has details about the different senses, and a feelings poem, you are expressing your emotions in some sort of way but these poems are much more rule driven. Now in kindergarten, first and second grade, there are a few different shape poems that I always introduce every single year, so let me share those with you. The first I like to share is an acrostic poem that looks like this, and with these poems you go ahead and have a topic word and you write it down vertically, and then students need to go ahead and kind of describe that topic word using each letter of the topic. Next I like to go ahead and introduce cinquain poems that look like this. Now my students really like these because we use parts of speech and it's only five lines to describe a topic. So here's an example, kittens, adorable fluffy, purring, scratching, playing, grow up too quickly, and cats. So as you can see there, the first line you introduce a noun, the second line is two adjectives, the third line is three verbs, again they're all relating to this topic, this topic being kittens. The fourth one is a phrase that has to be four words long that goes ahead and describes the topic, and then the last one is another one word synonym for the first word, which is the topic, so kittens and cats. And the last one, which is a student and teacher favorite, are shape poems. And here's an example of that, but a shape poem can either be written inside an already drawn shape, or students can go ahead and challenge themselves to write their poem so it actually creates the outline of their shape, and that shape is the topic. So here are some examples from students that have done this in the past, and these are some of my favorite. Here's a shape poem of a fish that a student made, and she made it in the shape of a fish. The way I had them do this is I had them actually outline very faintly a fish, and then they could write along the outline. Here the student writes, a fish is cool because it swims in the sea. I like to eat fish. I mean goldfish crackers. They are good. I like fish and the sea is cool. Again, not many rules here other than all of the sentences have to go ahead and describe the main topic. They could draw it in the outline of the fish and decorate around it. It is a lot of fun. Here is another one a student did, and I thought this was so cool because not only did she do it about the kite, but she actually drew the shape with the wind blowing the kite. In this one she writes, the wind blows my kite away. I shout, help, help, my kite is flying away. There is no one to help. So I go home and I asked my uncle, but he said, no, no, no. Talk about a sad poem. The wind blowing the kite away. And here is one more of a flower, and this student actually decided to write from the bottom up. So this student writes, flowers smell so sweet. They come in all different colors like red and pink. Sometimes they are very small, but flowers are beautiful. There are other form poems I also like to introduce, like haiku and color poems and a few other ones, but those three are some of my absolute favorites in K through two. And last but not least, step number five would be to go ahead and add all of these templates and all of these planning sheets to a writing center for students to use and implement throughout the rest of the year. So the way I've always taught this in the past is that very first day when introducing teaching writing poetry, 
we go ahead and just spend the day exploring, like I mentioned back in step one. Then on every other day, we will do a little bit of exploring, meaning maybe I will go ahead and read a poem or two aloud before we go ahead and start writing. And then I would actually introduce the type of poem. So let's say it was day two and we would introduce a sensory poem. I would model it, do it with my students, and then they would write their own. Day three, same similar setup where we would do this with a feelings poem. And then each day after that is when I would introduce a new and different type of form poem. So day four might be acrostic poems, day five might be shape poems, whatever form poetry you want to go ahead and introduce. But you always want to leave a little bit of time for students to still explore and read those different poems themselves. Once students have learned to write all the different poems you wanted to teach them, I like to go ahead, throw them in a center, and let students free write whenever they want to. So if they have a little extra time where students maybe might be writing in a journal in your classroom or answering a writing prompt of their choice, they also now have another option to go ahead and write a poem. Maybe they want to write a shape poem. Maybe they want to write an acrostic poem. It's totally up to them. When I was teaching first grade, I found that in April, May, and June, my students would absolutely gravitate towards those poetry templates during free writing time. For whatever reason, they just found them to be a little bit more fun. They could kind of write about whatever they wanted without, you know, there being those specific rules of, you know, a beginning, middle, and an end. They could just, maybe they were feeling sad that day and grabbed a template and wrote about all the reasons they're feeling sad. Or maybe they wanted to do a shape poem and draw a picture of something and color it in. I never spent too much time really honing in on their poetry other than just praising it and being excited that they were writing and enjoying it. So there you have the five steps I take when I am teaching my own students how to write poetry in a K through two classroom. All of the little writing sheets and planning sheets that I've shared in this video are available in my writing poetry unit. I'll go ahead and link that down below. I sell it on TPT and on my store on my site. So I will link those down there in case you want to grab them, but you could easily just follow those same five steps in your own classroom as well. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. I will see you in the next one. Bye.